Welcome to 3D Chill. Do I have a fun project for you today? This print needs no introduction. If you plan on tackling this project, you better bring your patience. With 13 pieces, this is going to take you over 100 hours to print and plenty more for the cleanup. And that's assuming nothing goes wrong. This is only the first part of this build. Make sure you subscribe to see how this project turns out. I've sent this off to my friend Erica so she can give it that extra special bling. If you're interested in blinged out craft ideas, make sure to follow her on TikTok. Let's head on over to Thingiverse and grab us some files. I've included the links in the description below. Now before you start slicing, there's one more thing we're going to have to do. Head on over to Remixes, click on that, and you're going to see a remix that I did. It's called Cinderella's Castle Plate Fix. It's important that you print these two remixed plates instead of the originals. The originals won't fit. There's not enough clearance for the entrance of the castle to slide in and fit flush. I've also included the link in the description below. So the files we're going to be replacing is floor 3 of 4 and floor 2 of 4. Now that we got all the files together, it's time to start slicing. I decided to print this castle at 200%, so don't forget to increase each and every part. The first plate can be printed without supports and laying flat. The rest of the plates will need to be vertical with regular supports. I highly recommend that you print the rest of the plates with a brim so you get better adhesion to the bed. For the remaining nine parts of the castle, it's going to be real easy. Just remember, enlarge to 200% and use tree supports. Now that slicing's out of the way, let's get to the print montage. To make this clean up a lot easier, you're going to want to get yourself a nice set of needle nose pliers. I'm using a set from Bozzy Tools that includes six different styles of needle nose. And it goes without saying, you'll need a good set of nippers. I'm also using a needle file set. It'll probably be a good idea for you to get some sandpaper so you can smooth out some of the rough edges. I'll also be using this miniature tabletop vise from Panavice. If interested, I'll leave a link in the description below.
Here's where we ran into our first problem. As you can see, there's no way we're going to get the entrance to fit without some modifications to the plate. For this modification, I used Tinkercad. You can see here where we need to cut out the notch on both the plates. Here's what the new plates look like. And as you can see, they've got a little extra notch to allow the entrance to slide in. Now that this is taken care of, we can move on to the rest of the castle. The one thing I like about this print is that it's very forgiving. There's a lot of give in the plates, but to me, that's a good thing. It means you won't need to worry about tight tolerances. And if you decide to glue the parts together, this won't even be an issue. What I thought was really clever is that the part descriptions are embedded in the print itself. This means you'll never have to guess what part you're holding. Assembling the rest of the castle is pretty straightforward. There's a diagram included in the print files that's fairly easy to follow. Now that the inner part of the castle is complete, time to assemble the outer wall. With the remixed plates, the entrance slides right into place. Here's the fully assembled castle. Now you don't have to use the plates, but I think it gives it a finished look. After weeks of printing and cleaning, here's the castle in all its glory. It's currently getting painted and blinged. I can't wait to see the finished product, but that's a video for another time. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe. And as always, happy printing.